Hello, everybody, and welcome to our session on perspectives on design, learning, and innovation. And um, I am Eva Brooks, and I work at uh, Aalborg University in Denmark. Hi, everyone. My name is Susanne Dow, and I'm from University College of Northern Denmark. And hello, uh, I'm Stefan Zelander, Senior Professor at Stockholm University. And I will start sharing my screen now so we can start our uh, presentation. So here we go. And we have the uh, full screen. So we are happy to be here today and we will uh, start our uh, presentation with introducing um, the background to this um, presentation, which actually is related to a book where me, Susanne and Stefan has edited, and it is titled Digital Learning and Collaborative Practices, Lessons from Inclusive and Empowering Participation with Emerging Technologies. And the background to that book is that um, digitalization uh, in general has changed ways of learning and it has changed also the conditions or challenge the conditions for creativity in different ecologies of learning. And uh, this raised questions about how to approach learning and design in new ways. And that's why we um, <clears throat> started uh, to um, um, create this book, which includes chapters from many very good authors and uh, which we had the pleasure to, to edit. And in this presentation, we will present three perspectives that are included in this book on how innovative designs and learning can promote new metaphors, new theories and methodologies to study these kinds of processes. And Susanne, she will start with a perspective where the focus is on environmental spaces based on eco ecological understanding of design and learning, focusing on boundaries and people's wayfinding. And next, Stefan, he will. Um, present a perspective with a focus on collaborative design in educational settings in relation to context and sequences, framing and fixing points, and on the choice of material and semiotic resources to express and represent knowledge. And finally, I will present a perspective where a focus on activities with artifacts and people's engagement, focusing on creative and playful processes of making and breaking. So by this um, introduction, uh, Susan will uh, con continue. Thank you, Eva. Um, <clears throat> my part of this paper is addressing the epistemological framing of design and learning across shifting boundaries. Okay. Yeah. The ecological approach is chosen because it accommodates circumstances under which people can gain lifelong learning skills, such as problem solving, collaboration, communication, and creativity. And working from this learning ecology perspectives contributes to a learning uh, language uh, where people's interactions and activities across different environments are framed. It's also a dynamic perspectives and it's flexible and it's According to Siemens, it's a learning ecology frame, the space in which learning occurs in a way where knowledge is shared, co-created and recreated in a mode where experimentation and failure are recognized as part of the learning process. Something that is very important when we look into new learning strategies and ways of capturing design and learning in the 21st century. When we look into a learning ecology, perspectives, we also have to recognize the boundaries. And according to Baron, they are permeable, blurred, and multiple, and they are influenced by people's mutual engagement. And as you see at the slide, uh, the picture at the right side, you will see that there are different kinds of borders uh, and echo tones to, they have different forms and they can be quite different. Um, I have used concepts from uh, biology, um, and the two concepts are ecotones and ecolines. Uh, they both address the zones where there are rich diversity and emerging new species. And the uh, ecotones represent the stressful zone, 
contrary to equal lines, which are more stable. However, they are both seems to capture the way in which uh, people navigate, for instance, between theory and practice, between the digital and the physical environment, and between different kinds of engagement with technology. So I have used the, con the, the metaphorical comp concept of technology learning designs, people's or other intensities as a way to, to address these borders. When people are crossing design and learning, uh, crossing borders in design and learning processes, they are framed by the metaphor of wayfinding. And this is also a concept retrieved from biology, but also anthropology. And it's a way this concept of wayfinding can address the way people navigate in different learning environments and how they design and act and create their knowledge. To quote Ingall, people feel their way through a world that is in self in motion, continually coming into being through the combined action of human and non-human agency. And that way, I stress that learning as wayfinding is a good metaphor, capturing human knowledge and identity development. And I can compare learning as a part of the identity development. It's a process of mapping the learning landscape and finding paths in movements. And it's also a process of interconnection between people and other entities crossing borders and finding their way through new knowledge, understanding and development. And these ideas uh, are also crossing borders. So when people navigate different kinds of complex learning environments, they will try to find a way and gain new knowledge in these environments. So the connection between wayfinding and design learns lies in the process of the and the and the interconnection between entities. For instance, people, artifacts, and spaces, as you as you can see at the picture at the right side. And learners are here regarded as learnscapes designers. They are not only uh, consuming knowledge, but they are actually creating knowledge. An ecological approach to learning as wayfinding, thus. Uh, offers a frame for understanding the process in design and learning and development and movement in design processes. And this is, for instance, when people are making MR sketching or generating design, generating design patterns or mapping out concepts or um, much of the process embedded in the design process, particularly uh, in those different environmental zones and crossing borders. For further digging into the concept of learning from design, I think I'll give the word to Stefan. Thank you, Susan. And, uh, and uh, this also functions as a, a broad uh, starting point for what I'm doing. You can see that our three perspectives is like a family-like perspective and uh, I've taken up the idea of designs for learning and designs in learning. So my first uh, point is that uh, design is actually a, a kind of scientific paradigm and uh, a way to develop uh, uh, things, processes, artifacts, environments. And the idea of design is that um, it's more heavily on function and meaning rather than function and form as the older design process. It's about framing, <coughs> uh, both in inst institutional and individual framings, but also the way we frame a problem. And the framing is a very important starting point. Redesign is also a concept of, of importance as well as uh, collaborative design in innovative work. <clears throat> and we'll take this into learning. There will be a, a, a focus on partly teaching, what we design for, but also learning as a process where we design in our way of learning. 
It's important to acknowledge the multimodal knowledge representations and the move from a textually based learning to more collaborative, elaborative, and uh, learning, which also relates to games and simulations. And in doing these studies, we have to, to focus on information linking, but also activity linking. What are you supposed to do with the things you are learning and how should you yourself represent your learning? So therefore, sign making, sketching, transformation and redesign are important concepts. And finally, science of learning is about what cultures of recognition and assessment standards that are seen, that seems valuable at a certain moment. <clears throat> so learning, from my point of view, is not a thing. It's, it's relational concept. It's about increased capacity to take part in a context and use new knowledge or use knowledge in a new way. It's about making more refined differentiations and being able to do more complex things. And learning is also kind of redesigned because you learn not by imitating only, but you're also creating something anew, as Susan pointed out. And uh, the learning is, of course, dependent on the communication in the context, the different modes and media used. And uh, finally, learning is seen as a meaning making process based on creative engagement. And in our special paper here, we also focused on some certain aspects of uh, creating design patterns, which is about accepting that in an innovative process, you don't only use words and text, but you use things, you create things, you model things, uh, by way of multimodal knowledge representations. And this is a sign making process, of course. And it's also what we call a participatory design. So our paper is very much focused on that, how you can create design patterns in this case, in the school context. And finally, I am in my research group has developed a <coughs> model that we call learning design sequence, which is a way to understand uh, on the one hand what is given, then the transformation process, and then the types of evaluation. But I will, will not go into this model further here. I just want to give it a hint as a more systematic way of studying learning. Thank you. Now to Eva. Okay, thank you. And I will uh, continue with uh, the third perspective then, uh, which we call designing as play or design as play. And um, one could say there that uh, design and play, they share similarities, but they are also different uh, and at odds with each other in that way. Both play and design promote curiosity. We have heard that both from, from Safan and Susanne, how it, how sketching and the multimodal processes and so on uh, can promote curiosity, creativity, and exploration. But however, design typically leads to uh, concrete solutions for a specific situation, for a specific uh, problem, uh, ending up with a prototype of this designed idea, which then later on becomes a product. Why design uh, is like that, play, on the other hand, is, is seen as open-ended, uh, where people imaginatively interact with the world in a more than open-ended way than, than a solution-oriented uh, uh, way. And if we, we take designers, they are curious to ask the question, how? How can I solve this problem in order to get to the intended solution? And whereas 
we as playing humans imaginatively ask the question, what if and what could be? But however, both design and play questions and reflect reflects a wonder about the creation of a possible future. And in, in this way, we define a, a design as play that it represents a somewhat disruptive activity fostering novel idea generation. And with that as a, as a starting point, um, I will um, elaborate a bit on how this can be understood. So on one hand, we see design as play in terms of exploration, it's acts of making and breaking. And design as play also as a material and immaterial uh, interaction, including acts of prototyping. So design as play then, uh, in, in terms of exploration is, uh, is based on the studies we have carried out uh, one could say um, can be the same um, can be um, related to co-creative processes that foster this playful exploration and acknowledging the variability of play and which is char characterized by its quirkiness, redundancy and flexibility, according to Brian Sutton Smith. And in, in uh, our way of seeing this is that exploration includes these making and breaking actions. Uh, Stefan, he talks about redesign, and this is aligned with that because a redesign is also that you make and break and uh, uh, find new, new solutions. So children who have been involved in our studies that have been carried out over several years, they are open to existing ideas and to imagine ways in which things could be done differently. And they do that by considering uh, what is, what is, uh, is based on the knowledge I have here and now and what I carry with me and what if is how I can see the future. And uh, this is to support what is and what if support actions of connecting and reconnecting ideas and hypotheses that emerge in such activities. And then the making and breaking actions correspond to a design process through iterative uh, cycles of designing and implementing ideas, where each implementation become an opportunity, a possibility to promote explorative, critical and playful actions. So through acts of making and breaking, children can make their own choices and decisions and thereby find their ways of dealing with what they already know, what is, and their creating imagination of what could be. The same design as playing in, uh, uh, in relation to material and immaterial interaction, acts of prototyping. Here we considering design as play through a lens of material interaction. It opens up for considering the crafting of ideas, uh, no matter if it is in, in a digital or uh, analog uh, contexts. It's the crafting of ideas as a process of working back and forth between materializing ideas and the manifestations of ideas through design, which we can uh, call prototyping. So that is to consider both details and the wholeness, materials, textures, and Vibe in his publication from 2014, he unfolds this by describing details as aesthetics qualities, wholeness as compositional meanings, materials as giving character to properties and texture as appearance of authenticity. And these material properties support children in envisioning new design. And children give, give attention to details in terms of their aesthetic quality and have focus on implementation, that is how materials are selected and used to give form to a design. So if we sum up now the three, these three perspectives, perspectives uh, we can say that despite the differences, 
uh, they can be used uh, in in um, in um, in different educational practices to understand people's engagement in design and learning. And the paper that we have uh, uh, this presentation relates to shows that differences in perspectives not necessarily represent division or disagreements, but rather exploratory routes that can generate new learning, understanding and resources to approach societal and educational challenges. And we uh, argue that this uh, approach that can include differences uh, in perspective can be a, a resource for understanding a more complex world that we, uh, the digitalization, um, is a consequence of the digitalization. And by this, we would like to say thank you. And uh, we should go over to uh, uh, questions, but that will be in our uh, what we should say in in uh, in real time. So we say thank you and we stop sharing and uh, hope to see you and we are curious about your questions. So thank you.